Hey guys, it's Rachel from Queen Vacuum, and you probably can't see it, but I have my repairing hat on, so to speak, small business life. Anyway, um, I should have started this video sooner, but I didn't really fully appreciate what I was going to experience inside the uh, the service on this particular Mila C3 cat and dog. Um, but I figured this is going to be a really good opportunity to teach you how important it is for um, for getting your professional services done regularly on your vacuum cleaners. This applies to all vacuums, really. Just remember, they are machines, just like your car. They do have service intervals. And there's also certain things that you need to be doing at home. So like, for example, this uh, lady has done a beautiful job keeping her vacuum really, really clean. She's really good about maintaining her bag, uh, keeping her brush roller itself really clean. Um, all the basic points that you need to be doing at home. And she's here on time for her annual service and HEPA filter change. So, um, but this is the, this is a teaching moment. So, um, the point is that everyone's house is very, very different and there are general, like I said, general intervals for things. But sometimes when these come in for their annual services, we'll find out that some people's household, whether it be they have like certain kinds of rugs or certain breeds of dogs or cats that are just extra. And what I mean by that is, you know, things like this is the electric power nozzle for the vacuum cleaner that the agitating brush that does the rugs. Um, there's going to be a certain amount of accumulation that happens, not just on the brush, but on the inside in the guts, like where the bearings are, like where the motor is um, and the bearings of the brush roller. There's accumulation that happens. And typically it takes a few years to get enough accumulation. I mean, it's all protected, but little things sneak through uh where it gets so much accumulation that it actually starts to impede the brush from spinning or even the motor from spinning and these are engineered to uh shut off to shut themselves down to protect themselves from overheating or when there's too much resistance either on like a thick rug or maybe you're running it too low on a thick rug or when there's too much build up and it'll and it'll know to stop so um, upon doing her normal service and general cleanup, I, we always test and inspect, and it was not really visible to the naked eye but um, uh, of what the problem was, but I noticed upon testing it that her uh, power nozzle was shutting off, like after just a few seconds of use, uh, now mind you, I was testing it on a lower carpet, um, part of that was to help clean the brushes, brush, bristles more, but I noticed it was shutting down, and if we didn't test and we just, you know, shipped it, that would have become a real problem later in the year for her and could have actually caused damage to the vacuum. So this is what I'm getting at. Um, there was really no more that she could do or not that was like that she's allowed to do uh, for going in here and I'll show you why. But this is where we come in and um, you know, the routine inspection that we do and the, the routine cleaning that we do every year for our customers who buy their vacuums here and get their HEPA filters done here, you get a free half an hour of what I'm doing right now to to look and test and inspect. And this means that we make sure that it's getting everything it needs, that it's working perfectly when you get it back, but also that um, we can see where we may need a tweak for your household. Again, everyone's different. Um, and sometimes needs will fluctuate throughout the year, but you may find that you can go to a little bit longer interval, but for some people, they need to have sooner intervals. It's just like with your car, the oil changes in your car. Uh, I use this analogy a lot, but it's you change your oil based on time or mileage. Mileage will use up that oil and, and cause debris and, and cause a cascade of problems if that oil isn't changed quickly enough based on excessive usage. So some people, the users way more hours a week per um, like than other people. And sometimes the surfaces or materials that they're picking up will accumulate faster or differently or more destructively than in other households. So that's why, especially the first year, this is her first year actually, um, the first year or two are the most important for getting in here, taking that minute to drop it off for allow us to take our time and do a good inspection to see what we're dealing with and um, to go forward. So I won't bore you with too much more, but I just wanted you to see what we're dealing with. I went already and cleaned out her brush. There was a little bit of accumulation. That's not a big deal. Again, that's the part that you can clean out on your own. I have already taken this apart. There was just a lot of pet fur accumulated. And what was happening was um, here in the brush roller, this is the part where it kind of seats into the housing. Let me lift it up so you can kind of see. 
right? See where it kind of sits down in here. I call that like a cradle. There was this. All of this material was wrapped up in there very tightly and actually starting to melt a little bit. So this was causing so much um, resistance from where, where the brush is trying to turn, okay, where it's seated in that little cradle, I call it, and it was um, heating up and not spinning well. So on this side, you can see very similarly, this is not the motorized side, but still the same accumulation is happening. Now, when this is all closed up uh, and you're looking, because you all you can see is from the underside, you really can barely see that. Um, you, I could just see a couple little strings poking out, but I could tell by the way it was performing that there was a problem. So, but that is the problem. Going back, this is already taken apart too. This is where, this is a little brush motor, okay? And, um, and this, well, I could see a little bit of stuff accumulation poking out, come on, um, by those gears. Now you can't see it because there's a motor mount that holds this down. So unless you remove this, you can't get in here and lift up and get that debris out of there. So I already cleaned that out. So sorry, you're not seeing the before, but going too long, that will start causing um, motor seizure, possibly, you know, more uh, accumulation under here, melting that plastic. You can see that right here, this just started to melt a little bit. Um, so we're fine, but we caught it. So this is just an example of extra. Um, now, the reason that this is not something you were going to do at home, you were not allowed to go in here, because uh, look at all the screws that are required to come out of here. And furthermore, these screws are those um, Torx or the little star-shaped screws that nobody has the magic screwdriver for. And there's a good reason, because that's your cue when you look on your vacuum cleaner, whatever brand it is, and you see this type of screw, not the normal flat header Phillips, like the little cross-shaped one, that's your cue that that is a no-no screw. That is a place that you are not supposed to go as the homeowner. Um, that means this is a, something that only a professional can can deal with. So, um, and yeah, there, you know, you've got wires and a circuit board and all kinds of stuff that you should not be dealing with. So, <laughs> so point is, this is not a huge deal. This is actually pretty easily um, remedied, but by us. So that is one of the 8 million reasons why it is really important to buy a really good product that is serviceable. <laughs> not all vacuums are, believe it or not. So the fact that we uh, can take them apart, they're en engineered to be able to be taken apart. We have training resources to be able to take them apart. Um, that's a big deal. But um, for people that have bought their vacuums, so they're buying good vacuums in the first place. They're getting a vacuum that is appropriately equipped to tackle the things in their house, such as, I don't even know what breed of dog this is, but <laughs> so that it's made for your house, it's set up for your house, um, but that you also have servicers like us to actually back up the product and keep it maintained and keep it working properly and to make little tweaks and to educate you as the homeowner, the consumer, the user of this vacuum to educate it and tweak it more for your personal usage at home so that you get the max benefit out of it. So very long story longer. Um, those are just some of the reasons why it's important to get your vacuum in a real place like ours and support small businesses businesses like us who are doing this work to keep your product up and running. So I hope that was interesting, guys. I hope that was educational for you. And I hope this will um, inspire you to get your vacuum in <laughs> for its routine service uh, and, um, and do it on time. Okay, well, we love you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time. Bye.